Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and in this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the South Donetsk direction where the Russians from one side continue the negotiation process with the Ukrainians in the city of Ugledar. On the other side the Russians continue their offensive operation on the flanks. As for the Velika Novoselovka direction during the previous night we got the video of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions in the village of Velika Novoselovka itself and further in the northern direction in the village of Skudne. In these videos we can see a number of Russian strikes, significant number losses of armed forces of Ukraine. So and this is not the first video from this direction. During the previous few days we received lots of updates. So the Russians are preparing something or at least the Russians want the Ukrainians to think like this. Now let's talk about the stronghold of Ugledar. As as you can see, we haven't received anything that, uh, according to changes or additional progress of the Russians in the citadel itself, and we can understand this. There is a negotiation process, but we see that Ukrainians uh, still hasn't surrendered. So what is the reason? The thing is that the main core, the main brigade uh, in the citadel is the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, which is responsible for huge losses of the armed forces of Russian Federation for the previous two and a half years of siege of the citadel. I'll remind you that since the beginning of the special military operation the Russians made a lot of attempts to take under control the citadel but uh, every single time the Russians were completely defeated by the Ukrainians mainly by the 72nd mechanized brigade. So now we understand that the soldiers of the 72nd mechanized brigade don't want to be captured by the Russians. So that's why there are a few groups of soldiers, those who have already accepted that they will be captured by the Russians and become prisoners of war, and those who are, is not going to accept this reality. And during the uh, the day before yesterday, yesterday, the day before yesterday and the previous night, this group who doesn't want to be captured by the Russians uh, are making more and more attempts to break through the encirclement and to move in the direction of Bagayavlinka. Just uh, to remind you, yesterday we got the video how the Russians were bombing uh, the central, the northern and the northeastern part of Ugledar with the lightning shells, with the thermobaric shells trying to destroy the concentrations of Ukrainian forces in this part in the convoys and today we got the video how the Russians were bombing the Ukrainians in the northwestern part of Ligdar. The same story, the Ukrainians were planning to concentrate, to accumulate some, to create some convoys and to begin the breakthrough operation but the Russians destroyed uh, their uh, formations and attacked the possible area of the concentration. So no chances to escape. Probably during the previous night there were a few groups that were managed to move as far as possible but they also were destroyed somewhere along the tree lines. We have a lot of uh, fire anomalies, photos, satellites, pictures that shows uh, possible roads of Ukrainian evacuation. As for the changes on the ground, according to different mappers, the Russians during the previous 12 hours managed to improve their positions to the west in the western direction of the coal mine South Donbass number one. This tree line was captured by the Russians during the previous 24 hours during the previous night and the sources reported that the Russians managed to improve their positions in the south and direction from the coal mine south Donbass number three. So a very important progress. The Russians took under control the tree line and this small forest and also are getting closer and closer to this complex. If the Russians are able to capture the complex then Ukrainians will, the chances for Ukrainians to escape uh, the Gildar will be low but I believe by the time the Russians reach this complex Ukrainians uh, there are going to be no more Gildar resistance in the uh, city of Gildar. Now let's talk about Katerinovka, the Russians continue their offensive operation along these small lakes, along these small water reserves, the Balka Saloninka. Just to remind you that two days ago we got report that the Russians took under control the Eastern line. A few days ago before we got additional con um, report about Russian control over the Eastern line, so we see the way how the Russians are moving in the western direction. Now let's move further and let's talk about the Kurahova direction. According to information we have, the Russians are... Um, 
improve their positions in the vicinity of Tsukurina. Uh, this information was confirmed by pro-Ukrainian mappers. As a result of offensive, the Russians established control over this stronghold and the sources reported that the situation in Tsukurina is complicated. This information was provided by pro-Ukrainian sources. At present, the Russians have entered the village and are trying to advance. We, the Ukrainians, still have few opportunities to stop the Russians. The village affects Lidova, Garnyak and Kurahova at the same time. The loss of this settlement will be extremely unpleasant. Furthermore, we have additional video that confirms Russian progress in the direction of the southern part of Selidova. This is very important video. If you remember, during, for the previous, during the previous few days we've been talking a lot about the concentration of Russian forces along the, tri along the railways exactly in the same area, and after the Russians managed to reach the critical mass of forces, they began offensive in the direction of Selidova. In this video we can see two Russian personal carriers that were heading towards some positions. In this video we can see the Russians landed in the area and take these positions under control. The Ukrainians were trying to destroy Russian personal carrier, but it doesn't matter because the Russians captured these positions. The, the Russian vehicles were moving along the main road between the mine and uh, between the village, uh, the city of Silidova. This is the roads of attack. And now we understand what the Russians are going to be next. Furthermore, once again, during the previous few days, the Russians were concentrating significant number of forces along these um, along these railways. And now, as I understand, the Russians are planning to move further in the northern direction, exactly along the railways, using this road of attack with the purpose to take under complete control these fields and these fortifications. If the Russians are able to do this, then Ukrainians will lose any chances to counterattack and to break uh, and to take the initiative back in their hands, because this is going to be already same encirclement of the city of Silidova, at least from the south, from the southwest, from the southeast, and from the east. Now let's talk about Marinovka. If you remember, just yesterday the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes, the Russians took under control the village completely. And this morning we got additional updates, additional advance of the armed force of Russian Federation for another true line in the direction of the Silidova from the north. The Ukrainians continue attempts, continue making attempts to counterattack the Russians with the stabilization of the situation, with the purpose to stabilize the situation. But everything that comes in this area are being destroyed by the Russians as a result of FPV drone attacks. Now let's move further. We have additional changes on the ground on the original Pokrov's direction. We have another video that was published by the 25th Sermobile Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In this video we can see a number of FPV drone attacks on the Russian positions and one of the episodes, exactly this one, was geolocated exactly in this point. So summarizing everything, the Russians during the previous night, 24 hours, managed to improve their positions along these three lines as well and to get as close as possible to the village of Suhoya and Lisovka. Additionally, we have reports from different mappers about progress also in the western direction. So if we zoom out, we're gonna see that everything looks like the Russians are trying Silidova in pincers. There is attack in the southern direction, like this one. There is attack on the line between Novogrodovka, Marinovka, and then in the direction of the coal mine and the mine. And another way of roads of attack is Novogrodovka, Lisovka, Dachinska. If the Russians are able to complete all the these attacks, all these roads, Silidova would be completely encircled by the Russians and this is going to be another either cauldron or operational encirclement and Ukrainians most likely would be forced to fall back. As for Mirnograd direction, we have additional progress on the ground along the railways, the Russians managed to improve their positions a little bit and as for the, uh, the guitar stronghold, we see that the Russians improved their positions as well to the northwest of Mikolaevka and to the west of guitar stronghold very important progress. The Russians took under control additional stronghold, this one. Uh, the Russians took under control these small facilities and the Russians are heading towards the next uh, stronghold and we're talking about this one. If the Russians are able to take this stronghold under control, this is going to be complete disaster and the beginning the battle for the Pakrovsk agglomeration. Now let's move further. As for uh, Tadetsk, uh, the third day in a row, we continue receiving updates about additional progress. As as for this part, as for this dense network of the fortifications, according to different mappers, the Russians managed to finish the battle for this stronghold and for this um, fortification area. And this report we received from pro-Ukrainian mappers. Based on this video, we have based on this post, we have adjusted the map as a contested area. As for Taretsk itself, we have small changes 
small advance of the Russians in this part based on the video and according to different mappers additional improvements in the forest between the uh, Zabalka Black and uh, the village of Zalizne. Now let's talk about the western uh, part, uh, eastern part of Taresk. According to different mappers the Russians managed to significantly improve their positions and as you can see the Russians resumed their attempts to take under control this part of Taretsk after the Russians finished the battle for the main citadel, for the central citadel. So once again, during the previous few weeks, the Russian main focus was to take under control this stronghold, the central stronghold of Taretsk. After the stronghold fell, the Russians began offensive, resume offensive in this part. And now this is the main objective and the main priority of the armed force of Russian Federation to take under control this part of Taretsk. Now let's move further and let's talk about the um, Kupin's direction. We continue receiving additional updates about the Russia, Russian biggest attack ever in the direction of Askol River. Today we got another video that was published by the 77th Aeromobile Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In this video we can see how the Ukrainians uh, were counter-attacking and destroying Russian vehicles that were heading towards the river of Askol. Significant number of tanks, personal carriers, and different vehicles, light car cars were destroyed as a result of just FPV drone attacks and artillery strikes. The Russians suffered significant losses. And once again, if you remember, if you remember, we were talking a lot about this territory. And I told you, if you remember, that according to my understanding, the next Russian goal, the next Russian target is to move towards the village of Lazova using this road of attack with the purpose to encircle the Ukrainians that are located in these fields. This will allow the Russians to maintain the line of combat contact to shorten the front line to really these additional forces to increase uh, the area of control of Ukrainian main supply roads. So this is that was my this was my understanding of the situation. But according to information that was published by the Ukrainians, the Russians decided to risk uh, to begin the risky attack, and the Russians decided to attack right exactly in the direction of Oskol using significant number of armored vehicles. So the Russians made completely opposite thing that we've been discussing for the previous few days and we see that the Russians were completely defeated. So this is very interesting. Now it's very important to understand whether the Russians are going to continue making these suicide attacks or they will go according to the military summary plan. Now let's move further and let's talk about uh, the uh, Kursk offensive, the Kursk direction, because we have a lot of updates and we receive additional changes on the ground. In this video we can see the Ukrainian flamethrower drone that was working on Russian positions, on the Russian positions to the southwest of Nikolaeva Darina. This video confirms additional Russian progress and we have colored this part of Suja region in Russian favor. As for the village of uh, Sverdlikova today, we receive the report that the Russians began full-scale offensive operation in this direction with the purpose to cut the village, to take the village completely under control. And this is very interesting because uh, we have uh, we already received reports about the Russian about the Russians answered or begun offensive in the direction of Sverdlikova and the first reports we receive on the 20th of September so eight days ago the Russians according to different reliable or non-reliable sources made an uh, attempt to answer but most likely that attack was repelled or those were just attacks with the sabotage and reconnaissance group and today on the 28th of September we we, renew, we, uh, the, uh, we start receiving once again reports about the Russian attempt to attack. So very interesting. The situation is going to be very interesting during the next few days. Furthermore, we got the video on how the Russians managed to discover the positions of Ukrainian forces in the village of uh, Krapivshina and as a result of Iskander strike, the temporary deployment point was destroyed. Now let's talk about Kyiv. We have additional reports and most of them are very interesting. The Netherlands will transfer 24 F 16s jets to Ukraine where they will be turned into scrap metal of the promised 18 jets. 14 are already in Romania, training Ukrainian and Romanian pilots. So this is the situation, but we still haven't seen F 16s in combat. We just received, continue receiving significant updates of how the Russians, with the use of Kinjal hypersonic complex, were attacking the airfield in Stara Konstantinov. Trump uh, 
After meeting with Zelensky, Trump said that his victory in the election would help prevent World War III. He added that he had a great meeting with him with Zelensky. If I am elected, the war between Ukraine and Russia will be end quickly. If not, this war will never end and we will escalate it and we will never and will escalate into the World War III. Uh, furthermore, we have reports that, uh, uh, according to information we have, that uh, uh, Western countries, Joe Biden, hasn't authorized um, uh, Zelensky and Ukraine to use long-range missiles deep inside the territory of Russia, and we understand why. Because currently there is a very, very big conflict is escalating on the territory of the Middle East. As for now, we're not going to talk about the situation in this area, but obviously the situation is going to uh, be escalating and intensifying more and more. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye